Welcome to Be Real Conversations, the podcast where I go behind the scenes and chat to amazing individuals in various industries and find out what it takes to be at the top of their field. On today's episode, we have Bongani Morgan, a writer of original, conceptual, narrative, short, long, and branded work. A director with an instinctive ability to create authentic, resonant storytelling with craftsmanship. A collaborator of the path of bridging the gap between storytelling and building brands. How are you doing, brother? Hi, how's your day been so far? Busy, man. Been busy, but uh, getting a handle on it, yeah. So you're getting a handle on it? Yeah. What did you have for breakfast? Coffee. Coffee. Coffee and some good, strong thinking ahead of the day <laughs> sure <laughs> i love that i mean you always gotta think ahead of the day right sure sure yeah man so can you just tell me a little bit about yourself for those who don't know who you are sure um my name is Ubungani morgan uh, i'm a filmmaker writer director based um in johannesburg really based everywhere but the home base is Josie Gauteng. For sure. And the, the hub really ready for South Africa, for South African creativity. 100%, yeah. For sure. Can you pinpoint to one moment that made you decide this is actually what I want to do? There's been many, but I think the one I can remember, like it was yesterday, um, was when I was about the age of five. Um, so I took Bugela e Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Um, and apparently I told your lady that whoever was responsible for the overall experience, I wanted to do that, you know? Um, so that was the one specific definitive moment I remember, just being in a five-year-old kid, seeing Terminator 2 and going, and just having this like life-changing experience and going, whatever it is, I wanna be part of that. Yeah. Sure, that sounds like amazing. I mean, I'm sure Terminator was, it still is actually one of my favorite movies too, yeah. That way. How do you approach the process of bringing a script to life onto a big screen? So just like Terminator. Starts with the script. Uh, first things first, but I think once the script has been established, the role of a director comes in where, you know, the, all the grades say you have to realize it, actualize it. And that's what it is. You have to be able to see the story um, in your own sort of vision. That means articulating how it makes you feel about it what you think you could add in, you know? And also, I think what you sort of been interested in your whole life becomes this whole catalog of memory banks that dictate your decision on approaching. And so like, if you grew up on action cinema, whatever script, even if it's a dramatic script, if there's one small set piece in the action, you are gonna gravitate towards that and it might determine the tone of the overall structure. Sure. And that's what I mean in terms of bringing yourself and your experience to it is that you you manifest those things based on your own experience and that's what directing is for the most part love yeah. that man that actually leads me to my next question then where did you grow up and the reason why i asked this is sometimes you know the things that we do and some of the yeah. things that we direct things um is is it comes from where we grew up and the things that we see we saw when we were coming up um so i have actually two questions in this where did you grow up and did your your environment grow up influence what you're doing now Sure, yeah. Um, I grew up in Jersey. Um, I spent quite a few formative years of Mbiloyam in Alex, um, in a very different part of Alex growing up then. You know, it was very much the cultural hub. It still is, but there were a lot of things happening in terms of media, pop culture. We had people coming in, showing us films. You know, we had these, uh, as we were missionaries growing up, showing us Passion of the Christ and these massive projectors on the fields at Gazi. We had, you know, sports days, you go to the main stadium and Alex watch um, one of our strong teams at the time, Alex United play other towns. You know, it, like if you think of pop culture in the nineties and how it was growing up in American Western culture in the nineties, I was part of that generation in Zanzi where we grew up with a lot of access to pop culture and this United feel that anything was possible. I think that's why I endeavored to be in the creative arts, you know, I had a very vi vivid, rich childhood that I think informed the name that I do now. Yeah. I really love that answer, man. So you've worked on a lot of films and you said growing up, you've seen a lot of things. Do you think the SA industry film, uh, or the, the SA film industry has grown in terms of just the content we're producing now from what you were seeing as a kid to what we currently seeing now? 
it's a catch to do that question, hey? Because when I think about SA film, and I think there's not enough history being done in our own sort of legacy of SA history TV film. We had Imzinez and Sizwa back in the day. Great, heartfelt, you know, unique TV shows, but we were made by white people. Yeah. You know, they didn't even know that. They were made by white people. You look at Abu, um, even the OCBC too, Abu Lisilo, all those epic, iconic, well produced shows were made by mostly white people. And it was like conceptually the work was strong, but in terms of representation, diversity, it was representing the people, it was showcasing, you know. So I think we've come a long way from that. Um, the content, I think it, it has de evolved, Rangani, but I think it's now evolving in the sense that we've recognized that the typical stories of post democracy are falling our way. Now we're into the post, post, post. I don't know how many posts there are, but into this postmodern world where we need to look at new challenges. What's the black experience in the city, in the rural areas, you know, 30 years almost into democracy. We need to stop going away from ideas of wishing for a South African democracy and look at South Africa in democracy, Ramanj. And where do we go from here? So what is your why for getting into the film industry? And the, totally, and the storytelling industry yeah. itself. I think the why for me is evolving over time. At first, it was just about this need to express, you know, your interests out of film, TV. But the why now is to really portray the potential of black excellence. I think that's what keeps me going is that when you come to terms of growing up as a black man in, in Africa, South Africa, and you look at the lineage, our history has been pure lot of bloodshed. It's been sad. It's been very much on the back foot. And my why now is to really usher in a new possibility of the black, the black child, the black man, the black woman, but black excellence is kind of the why because we are the culmination of all our ancestors before us. So it's, it's, it's important to honor that about ourselves. Less so the slavery, the apartheid, but more the organic greatness within, yeah. Sure. Now you have a mission to tell these stories and you've partnered up with made films. What impact have they had in your career and who are they to you? Sure. Yeah. That's a very good question. Um, so, so signing with made has been like one of those um, career milestones in the sense that I've always wanted to be signed. I've always wanted to be represented, especially in terms of commercial work. So what they are to me, really, they are like a production partner, a production home base. Um, certainly for now, it stands for my commercial aspirations. So really trying to, you know, build brands and tell stories and hopefully that will sink into my long form work. So yeah, they, a production partner, production platform, um, a, a home base for all my production needs. Yeah. Sure, and you've done some amazing work on there. I've gone onto your onto your website, bonganimorgan.com, and I've really seen some amazing films. And I came across one which has, you know, it always brings me to tears when I watch it. It's the Mabimbi uh, documentary. And it's really a story that I can resonate to myself. Can you walk us through the process of being selected as one of the directors, or in fact, the director for the Mabimbi documentary? Yeah, man. Um Sure. Um, interesting story. Um, I worked with this DOP. His name is Rick Joaquin. And we've, on my come up in the commercials industry, still am. Um, a couple of years ago, I'd worked together. I met him on Instagram, liked his work, liked his vibe. And we, he was able to sort of break ice by breaking through the industry. And then years later, he had, he's friends with this um, EP who runs a company. And this EP said, I'm looking for specific type of director who can do this type of thing and Rick recommended me uh, on that base I met with the producer he presented to me the idea of the story and at first I was like there's no way I'm going to get this chance to do this it's just we just won the World Cup you know there were a lot of I, I, I think at the time even now great directors who could have handled this much better but um, you know you can't stand in the way of fate and I think the way I responded to it allowed them to believe that I could actually handle this project. Yeah, to cut a long story short, it, yeah, that's that's kind of how it fell in my path, just knowing the right people and the right time. That's so interesting, actually. 
I mean, as I said, you've done so much, uh, so many films. And when I look at that film, I uh, ask myself, how do you balance the create your just your creative visions of the film and your com- the commercial needs of the project itself? That's a very that's a deep question. Mm-hmm. That needs like the masters as Fanana or your 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 Hitchcocks. But I'll give it a try. Um, number one, it goes back to your sensibilities. When I receive the Mabimbi brief, um, on how to tell his story the research and having known what I know about him first thing it really felt like it was like a superhero story first and foremost I was like here's this guy who's achieved something truly great and remar- remarkable bigger than him when you check the guy and when you follow his story it's like a movie it is so I was like at first I need to make people understand this is a hero's journey you know because this guy became a hero and he still is to this day so that's the balancing of um what I think I could have brought to the to the table in terms of commercial needs, it's just about referencing what you feel is at the tone of the audience appetite. You know, right now we're into this big thing of superheroes, but we also we we like character div- driven things. So I was trying to strike the balance between finding a superhero archetype with like a nice origin story and to try and find that. So that I think. That's where I try to balance the commercial appeal, you know, giving that epic superhero texture. But the, his character made it the story that we all sort of relate to. It definitely did. I mean, he's a hero to many kids, to many people, um, across not just in South Africa, but across the world generally. And so you work with all these heroes, with all these superhero-like people. What are your dreams and goals in the industry? Yo. I think the ultimate dream, the best dream would be if you look at world cinema right now, the guys who are driving world cinema, Hollywood is a thing of the past, is Asian cinema. A couple of years ago, it was Mexican or Latin American cinema. Now it's, it looks like it's Hong Kong or Asian cinema. We need to bring SA to the fore. And I'm saying South Africa specifically, not to discount other industries within the diaspora of Africa, but the potential we have, I think, number one, the cultural influence, the potential of that is very crucial. Um, and I think that the dream would be to make it more equitable to all the hardworking, all the passionate new generation of filmmakers want to come in. Make it equitable, make it sustainable, man. Make it, make, make structures so that it's easy to, you know, win good work on merit as opposed to favors or popularity. That's how we can really elevate our structure. And that's the dream, you know, anyone who deserves uh, to have a fighting chance must be given the chance. I definitely wish those dreams come true, brother. I know that you'll definitely do your best and you'll definitely succeed at achieving all of those things. Bless me. Award shows are one of the stepping stones, of course, for any creative to showcase their work and yeah. to be to be out there do they mean anything to you another tough one um i think they're very important man you know like i'm a f- massive sports fan and we know it's in sports the currency of success is trophies and i think likewise in in filmmaking storytelling and creative arts you know currency of success is really getting your word and your work out there but An award is kind of like your peers recognizing you and that's what makes it special. That's what makes it meaningful is that you have, you sitting in company or people you look up to and people who are working at the same time as your contemporaries and they can go, we recognize what you've added to this community. And that's, I think that's important for me. It gives you that weight of knocking to certain people like, hey man, remember we did this cool thing in the past. I've got this new thing, which I think could work. So. Let's try, see if we can make it work. It, it, yeah, it legitimizes you. It makes you credible in in an industry or in a, in a world where you need credibility to k- get given a chance. Yeah. Love that. What can a young kid do that wants to be similar to you, wants to be like you? Because, you know, we chatted about this off air, but the creative industry has become an industry where a lot of kids and people generally are flooding to because it's one easy access to. There's a lack of jobs and so forth. Um, yeah, what do you think your purpose is in the industry? Sure. Um, very good question. I think 
fundamentally my purpose i'm just a normal kid for a normal mzansi boy born and bred in jose and alex and what i'm trying to showcase is that whatever dream you have is valid you sure. know and choosing one of the hardest endeavors i'm going to picking or does creativity pick you but being born a creative or choosing to become a creative is one of the hardest endeavors ever you know economically it doesn't make sense to anyone who you involved with um and then you look at it at the demand it has it's like it's taking everything from you constantly at first it doesn't look like you're going to make enough of a living you also don't have much of a life because you're always out there um but it's just to prove that just like any vocation whether it be teaching being in medicine creativity in, in, in all its formats is super important and it's not to be taken lightly at the same time i don't think anyone can do it any everyone is born creative but i don't think anyone can be a creative in a sense that like you're a writer poet it needs training it needs life experience and i'm trying to showcase just like any valuable job you need to earn your 10,000 hours before you can put yourself on the pedestal of being an artist or a professional yeah love that man what films have you worked on that we possibly have not taken the recognition of and you feel that you know what i'm going to pat myself on the back for this one because i really did great work on it yo yeah, it's a weird one cuz inherently as i mean you're a photographer you feel a certain project or piece of work you've done is like damn this is cool so i've reached a point where i need to check with myself if this is cool and i'm happy with it on what level so is it on a level that the way i imagine it coming out did i hit that mark or in a way that it resonated with people um and i think i try to put it on that level of how do people respond to it if they've seen it so i've got a stocky called the art of being human and i think to this day it's still one of the most seminal pieces of work because it informed my maturity to my later work not a lot of people have seen it and i feel that it needs to be seen for its cultural importance less so that i made it but more about what it stands for you know so guy about fighting apartheid and literally giving his life in service to making the world a better place and i think a lot more kids in school could benefit from for such a from such a historical exercise you know sure. in your history yeah. sure and where can we check this out right now it's probably unsolicitedly on my vimeo page uh the full kind of kind of like a low res version but i'm trying to find the 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 proper one and get the proper channels the proper permission to actually to have it out there. it's a bala world production so it's kind of like a corporate feature film um um yeah so that's where it's at now we we'll definitely will yeah. definitely check that out and i think well done to you for that film i know that you know we work so hard in the creative mm-hmm. industry and sometimes we don't give ourselves a pat on the back because we looking forward to the next job we perhaps looking at the next person mm-hmm. and i think you've really done your work you and i met on a project and you know here was this guy who was literally doing everything else and then i had to ask myself you know who is this guy let me get to know who he is and you turned out to be such an amazing human being who's done amazing Great work time, so really it is an honor for me to have this podcast with you nice um, and the, the last question i have for you is what do you think it takes to be at the top of what you do um what what it takes to be a a director let me put it like that bro just i mean you're a director and a writer fair fair i think it just takes commitment man like any worthwhile thing commitment you know um and that commitment really puts a test to you can you are you up for the challenge is it is it for you in in a way that besides your dreams and your delusions like there's things you we all not good at we can't be good at anything um and the commitment to being a filmmaker is you interrogating in be long for it too. um it's it's a weird one cause the, the directing job requires you to be mature but also being open minded so therefore it means you have to be much older to be kind of good at it in terms of that point of view but anyone can be a good storyteller if you tap into this the the tempo of the world the tempo of life you know i'm a fan of people i love watching people as stalkerish as it sounds um i love listening to people i love watching 
little nuances of human behavior and all of those things are part of the obsession I have. And I link it to storytelling because I can't explain my job, what I do, but through working with you guys, you're talented cinematographers, photographers, actors, editors, you're able to and synergize it into an expression, you know? Um, but ask me what I do on any given day. It's a bit of a weird one, um, For sure. but put me in the situation of a set or a brief. Here's this thing we need to do. How would you approach it? Then I'm activated in many ways. Sure. And then you can be able to tell us what it takes. I really love that, man. You and I have had a really great podcast and I feel like I have one more question just for the kid listening anyway or for anybody else that really has a dying desire to get into this industry. And, you know, there's this one, there's one things or one of few things that change our lives or our careers. Sometimes it's a film that you watch. It yeah. really changes things. It's a talk you hear by somebody. Yeah. What's the one thing somebody watching this right now and they want to jump into film, what does one thing they can do, whether it's to watch, whether it's to listen, whether it's to attend, what is the one thing they can do to fast track their, their, their career? I think one of the key things we live in this social digital age is that um, if you look up any of your favorite filmmakers locally on social media, you can find them. And certainly some of my role models locally, I was able to stalk them on my come up and I still am on the come up and, you know, putting yourself out and DMing them and then responding in real time going, yeah, okay, we could do a lunch or I could give you advice or two, but also never stop watching movies. You know, one of the greatest things or films or any material that's motion picture or content in this current age, never stop. Musicians, I keep telling young artists if you want to be a musician study music learn music make it your thing make whatever you're passionate about your business of life same thing with with anyone who wants to be a filmmaker we've got gang movies we've got social media books film school challenge is arguable the film school route because now we've got podcasts we've got youtube videos tutorials we've got films man the best best way to learn one of the best ways is to watch films and imitate them. That's kind of like how I did on the come up. Imitate, imitate until you possess a vocabulary that you stick to and it keeps improving. Yeah, that's what I would say. I really, really love them and that's great advice. By the way, I was asking for myself, I am that kid that really loves watching what you do because you do it so passionately <laughs> and you do it so well. Uh, my brother, thank you so much for coming to the podcast. Thanks for the opportunity, my uh, I really appreciate it. I'm sure you and I will definitely catch up on part two one day. Looking forward to it. Appreciate it, man. Allah. Thank you guys for listening to the Bureau Conversations. This is Bongani Morgan, a film director and many other things. Make sure that you check out in the description all about him. And I will also leave the details on how to get a hold of him from social media to his website. If you are listening on Spotify or Apple Music, please make sure that you follow and catch us on social media. Hashtag B-Roll Conversations. We out.